Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And today I'm at the Zebulon Vance birthplace. Any of you who are regulars here will recognize this site for sure. I've done tons of activations here in the past, and uh, yeah, today's no exception. Um, it's a beautiful day. It's what, uh, June 6th? It's a Thursday, and I'm going to plan to do a Parks on the Air activation here with what I think is a very special radio. Um, so before I begin, I'd like to thank my Patreon and Coffee Fund supporters. You guys really do make all this possible. Um, I don't run ads on my YouTube channel. In fact, I turn off all ads and all monetization on YouTube so that you don't have an ad popping up every so often in the middle of my activations and things. Uh, so this is a great way to support me if you feel like doing it, if you have the means to do it, if you don't have the means or you don't feel like it, that's fine too. <laughs> uh, especially if you're saving up for your first radio or something, I completely understand. Um, but anyway, um, planning to do a park activation here today. I actually haven't been to Zebulon Vance in probably two months or more. Um, so uh, it's like, uh, I don't know if you feel this way uh, when you're doing a park activation or not, or a summit activation for that matter, but it almost feels like you're coming back home when you uh, come to a park you haven't been to in a little bit. Now, I plan to have a lot longer here to do an activation today, but this morning I uh, volunteered for, I'm a member of the, um, or actually um, volunteer for the Asheville Radio Museum. And we're really excited because Asheville Buncombe Technical College, which is where we have our museum, has given us more space. And we're in the process of moving, um, so we got way more space to put up our collections, and it's super exciting. So I was helping this morning with a, a bunch of us volunteers to uh, set up some shelves and stuff for all of our collections in the new space. And uh, spent more time there than I thought. A lot of it was because I was just chatting with some of the amazing members that are there. So that's what I was doing. If you ever come to Asheville, make sure you look up the Asheville Radio Museum. It's a really cool little spot and it's only getting bigger. So uh, I thought I'd have like a couple hours to do an activation. Now I've got like an hour to do an activation. Um, and the radio I brought with me is the amazing Mission Argo One, our Mission RGO One. I call it both things. This is one of my favorite radios. This is one of the very last radios in my collection I would ever even consider selling. In fact, I will not sell this radio. I love it so much. And um, you don't see it in the field a whole lot. And the reason why is just because of me as an operator, I tend not to take um, tabletop style radios with me to the field very often. You'll see me do it once or twice a year, but I just don't do it a whole lot because I tend to settle for the smaller radios. Um, you know, like my KX series radios, uh, my um, Pentec radios, MTRs, um, all those things. Those are things I tend to take to the field a lot more. But the Argo One or the Mission RGO One is just um, a phenomenal radio. And I did some updates to it recently, some firmware updates. So I'm hoping I may have changed some of the settings in it and I may discover that today uh, because I did this not too long ago and I can't remember what I changed in it. So I may have to go in and make a few setting changes, but this is such a cool radio. I'll talk a little bit more about it, but actually I had planned today to do one of my getting to know you uh, videos about the Ar Argo one, but I just don't have time to do that today. So it'll be in my next uh, mission video. So uh, first of all, let's go ahead and get an antenna set up. And I'm hoping like everything that my wireless mics are working properly. I've had issues that I discovered too late in the game. <laughs> a lot of the uh, activations I did in Ohio, uh, my, I discovered later on that my mics weren't working properly. So I'd go walking off and talking and it looked like I was just talking to myself, which I do a lot of anyway. Um, so let's go ahead and get this started and hopefully my mics will hang in there. I've actually got two mics on me right now because I'm going to pull one of them off and put it with the radio. And my goal is to put a line in that tree right there. And the antenna that I'm using is this KM4 CFT. Uh, you can't really see it this way, but um, it's a, just a little uh, infed half wave that's linked. It's a 30 meter infed half wave with a 40 meter extension on it. We're going to run it as a 4020 today. No clue what conditions are like right now. This morning they were okay. They weren't amazing, but they were okay. This afternoon, it could be garbage or it could be amazing, who knows? <laughs> These days, you just don't know. So I'm gonna, without too much more time here, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, putting a line in the tree. And if I lose audio, I'm sorry about that. 
last time I came out and did this and the mics weren't working, it looked like I was talking to myself <laughs> the whole time. Okay, I'm going to go for this old dead tree. This tree is going to fall down one day and I hope that my throw line doesn't do it. It is only good at this moment, I think, for woodpeckers or something. It's, uh, this is always a challenging one to actually do. And uh, the reason why is because there's not a really large opening for um, getting a line in the uh, branches up here. There's very few branches, as you can see. And I think if I go for one of those top ones, I could possibly pull it a little hard. It's lost some branches since the last time I was here. I can always go for that live tree over there too. But this poor tree, I don't know if it gets too much uh, water or what, but we'll give this a go if it doesn't work. I actually caught that branch. I can't believe that. That was one in a million right there. Absolutely ideal for doing the uh, deployment of the antenna. This antenna is super lightweight, so it shouldn't put any pressure on that dead branch at all. And frankly, I don't think they're going to mind if they lose a branch over this <laughs> because the uh, um, tree is not long for this world anyway. I'll come down one branch at a time. So let's grab my antenna. Now, I will be using kind of this heavier coax today because this has a PL259 on the end, and that's what's in the back of the Mission RGO-1. Okie doke. I'm just going to string this out. That is going to be a perfect sloper configuration. Okay, this always messes me up because I'm not putting it around a um, big ring like I normally do. There we go. This is a super thin wire, but I kind of still do this little easy to pull off knot. Now what I'll do is just string this guy out here. Whoops. Let's pull. How did I do that? Evidently, last time I put this S-ring, S-hook in, I got the wire caught in it. There we go. Ooh, this is hard to get out. Yeah, I accidentally pulled the little spring-loaded clip on the S-hook around some of the um, antenna wire, and I didn't mean to do that. I need to fix this real quick. There we go. Come on, get out of there. Okay. I was able to do that without having to put on my glasses. I'll just pull this out so that, let me make sure that the link, the link is not in right now. So let me put the link in. There we go. So this will have the 40 meter extension. So this antenna will be resonant on 40 and 20 meters. And Here we are close to the end. I'm gonna clip this around, give it a little bit. There we go. And I'll go ahead and grab the end of the line here. And what I'm gonna do is actually make it so that the end of my feed line is where the radio is. I'll go ahead and hook it into the radio actually. Sorry, I'm a little bit off camera here, but plug it into the radio and then kind of make a little, uh, there we go, a little strain relief here. And now I know about how far out I can pull this line when I start pulling the antenna up. But I don't want to put a lot of pressure on this. And the reason why is it's in that dead branch. And I'd, I'd rather that branch not fall because frankly, I really like where the antenna line is. That's as high as I can possibly get it in that tree almost. So I'm really pleased with that deployment and I don't want to mess that up. Here we go. 
Let's get pulled up on the other end. <laughs> it's really on the end there though. I will not be able to put any pressure on this at all. So that means that the feed point of the antenna is going to be very, very much close to the ground. And when I see that the orange line is starting to move, there it goes. That is about as much pressure as I think I can put on that line. So what I'm doing now, you probably can't see, but I'm hooking on my throw weight to this line to act as a weight to keep that taut. There we go. That's perfect. Now, the only thing I have to really watch out for is if for some reason a whole bunch of kids would come here and they could run over this line, which is the reason why I have this really bright line coming out. So I have to kind of watch for that. Hopefully you could have heard me this whole time and my, hopefully my uh, microphones worked properly. I don't know what I was doing wrong before, but hopefully it's working now. Okay, let's put one of these mics down here. Oh, it's a nice day. It's a little humid. It's nice. Okay. And you know what? Since I've got this little foam seat, I'm going to sit on it because it makes it just that much more comfortable. <laughs> this isn't exactly a, uh, uh, a wet bench or anything like that, but yeah, it just makes it even that much more comfortable. Oh, the Mission RGO one. Why do I like this radio? Again, I'll save a lot of this for um, my um, getting to know you video that I, I'll do on this. But basically, it fills a really interesting niche in the market here. Uh, this is a, I would call it like a cottage industry radio. Uh, Boris, who makes these in Bulgaria is um, a fantastic uh, amateur radio operator, DXer. Uh, he decided to make a radio that he wanted, which is more of a legacy design, and that's what this is. You, it, this looks like a legacy radio. It reminds me very much, and I think he was inspired by, I'm sure, to some degree, uh, Tintec radios like the Tintec Eagle. And uh, so he made this radio, and um, where is the paddle? There it is. Um, and he made this radio more of a traditional design, like I think it's super het and um, simple controls designed around the controls you use the most in the, on the air, I shouldn't say in the field, because it's not even really designed. It it's, makes for a good field radio, but it's also a good radio for anything you want to do, contesting, DXing, whatever. Um, what makes it really unique is it's not a 100 watt radio, it's a 50 watt radio. Actually, you can get about 55 watts out of it. And um, the audio is just phenomenal. The receiver's phenomenal. And um, the QSK as a as a CW operator is phenomenal. Um, it's a radio, op radio operator's radio, in my opinion. I just love this thing. And you can, anybody can get one, um, but he makes them in very small production uh, runs. And um, so you've got to kind of look at his website and figure out what, you know, well, I'm not hearing a lot of signals. This is not a positive sign, but... Um, I'll find an off frequency here to set up and we'll listen while I'm talking. Um, but uh, you follow his website and I'll have links to all of this in my um, um, uh, description. So um, you can look up all this information. It, this, it's really unique and that this radio, and I think it catches a lot of people's eyes because first of all, it's a legacy design where you just have a screen, a big encoder, all the knobs and everything are up front. Um, and also it has this white faceplate, which you don't see in a lot of radios. And I get people ask, they'll pe people will ask me all the time, what's that radio in your banner or wherever? Because not a lot of people have an RG01. And you don't see them on the used market hardly ever. I'll see maybe two in a year um, pass by on the used market. Um, 
and it's because not a lot of people have these to begin with and then the people who do order them usually keep them. There are exceptions to that, there are exceptions. And the ones that I've seen have been people who bought it and just weren't using it a lot and decided to sell it knowing that they'd probably be able to fetch a good price for it, frankly. Let's go ahead and set up the logs here. Um, US, oh my goodness, is it 4861? I'm going to get on the PUTA website to double check. I need to go on there anyway to spot myself because I did not um, announce this activation. So let's do a quick check here. US 4861. Whoops. I can't type. 4861. Tuttle, Educa Tuttle Educational State Forest. Okay. No, it's... Um, okay. Let's just type it in, Zebu, Zebu Line Advance, 6856, US 6856, Zebulon Advance Historic Birth Site. And today is the, again, 6th of June, 2024. We're going to start on the 20 meter band. And I'll put Argo 1 in Fed Half Wave. Yep. Okay, let me see what my power is. I'll have to check all this stuff because I, I have not done any of this. 20 meter CW. I didn't bring my mic with me to do SSB. I meant to, actually. Power is at 5 watts. Oh, it's such smooth QSK. I love it. Just, it has what it needs on the front. And I love that about it. Okay. And you know what? I'm probably not going to use the message memories. It does have message memories on here, but I may have reset them. Um, did I reset? Yeah, I reset them. They're not on there right now. Um, but um, uh, let's go ahead and put in my uh, time. 13, so it's 14, 15, 16, 17, 1800 hours basically is where we'll be. And uh, I'm actually going to set this off to the side, this microphone. Yeah, good. Making sure the microphones are working. It seems like they're working. I really love it when they work. I, I'm guessing I just did something incorrectly when I set them up last time, uh, the last few times in Ohio. I haven't done an activation in a bit, so. Um, I don't think I've done, have I done one since? I did one activation since I've been back from Hamvention. I've been so busy, only got one in. Okay, here we go. I need to turn up the side tune a little bit too. Let me spot myself. Add spot, uh, 14057. Sounds like the bands are dead though. Sounds like this is gonna be, take a long time to get this activation done. 6856, right? There we go, that spot took.
The, so the amazing thing is the bands are a little noisy today, but the receiver is super quiet on this radio. Nice to go all about our frequency. signal.
There must be some QSB on the bands. Okay, I'm 519. Has This receiver's so quiet, even on a noisy day like today. This is one of the things about the R RG01. The receiver's extraordinary. I should also, as I guess in the spirit of full transparency, I was also one of the first prototype reviewers and beta testers of this radio. Like five years ago. The bands are in rough shape today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The QSK is so insanely silky smooth. So, like I said, the interesting thing about this radio is it's not 100 watts, it's 50 watts. 
um, if you ever hear me working from home, I'm running at five watts. In fact, there's a really good chance if I've hunted you, I've been using the RG01 at home. because I, I do use it a whole lot at the house. It's usually on my desk along with my KX3, which are two of the radios that are in almost kind of permanent there. It's a good radio. One thing I want to check here, I don't know if I can do this. Okay, let's see, where am I going? Right. Just look here, you can change all kinds of stuff in here. The delay, gain, iambic ratio, paddle, code. There are a bunch of settings in here that you, uh, there's a whole set of like secret settings that you really shouldn't be jumping into too much. Um, let me go ahead and just pull off this actually. And this one has This radio has good contest chops too. It doesn't have all the fancy stuff that you find on like a contest grade radio these days, but it has a receiver of a contest grade radio. And actually the filtering is really good. You like being outdoors, don't you? I'm getting a two to one on here. I think that's probably because the tuner is actually engaged and it's gonna do a tune session right now. I need to turn the ATU off and bypass it all together. I need to actually just bypass the ATU and I've got to remember how to do this. I usually have it bypassed, but I changed a bunch of settings in it recently. Let's go in here real quick. And I think it's down, um, is it ATU? Whoops. I can't remember if this setting is for the ATU off. There we go. Uh, turn that off. Now I'm just getting a two to one.
usually have a little bit better SWR, but that's okay. Okay. Let's QSY here. And let me, oh. Thought I heard somebody. Make sure there's not somebody that wants to be worked. Let's go, let's try to do a little bit of tuning around here. I don't have a, so I'm gonna put it on mode CW. There's 12 people out here, 1442. They can't hear the person on the other end there, VE3. Yeah, the bands are rough. Let's try 65. That's in Missouri. Normally I'd be able to hear that probably on 20 meters. Not today, it looks like. Let's try 64. I could take a little more time here. Oh, KB6NU's on 40. Let me go down to 40 real quick and check them out. Oh, 56.97. This is North Dakota. Doesn't sound like I'm hearing anything there either. Oh, WDBNRF's on, let me see, he's at 63 basically. Can I hear? I can't hear Eric. I can hear his callers. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Eric. I know I won't be able to hear South Carolina, Alaska on 21, that was 10 minutes ago. That's probably too, too long ago. Let's go ahead and refresh this again and try one more time. Let me try to see if I can work KB6 and you down. Okay, let's see, he's 45. We're resonant here, I don't need to use it. <laughs> Can you hear him? This is going a little too fast here. Good to get you in the logs there, buddy. 1420, is there anybody else on 40 meters? Well, I'm happy to get him park to park. If Eric moves down to 40 meters, I'll be able to work him. P to P T U, whoops. Come on. Back here. You can tell I'm like not very good on a an iPhone keyboard. Should we try 15 meters a little bit for kicks? So this is my tenth, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I got ten. So now let's go up to just play on 15 meters and see if there's anything on 15. 15 sounds dead as a doornail. Here's what we'll do. We'll move here and we'll start calling CQ.
<laughs> Sorry. Just kick up the side tone just a teeny bit. I actually like this one set for my shack, uh, for shack audio. Um, Reverse Beacon Network do its thing while I suck on some water here. That's the first time I've worked Dan park to park. Great guy. He has a, by the way, KB6NU has a really nice blog. He also writes all these guides to getting your license, which are really amazing. Let me take a picture while I'm thinking about it. So I remember that was on 15 meters. I'll put 15 here. I don't, I'm not expecting anything though. The RBN did pick me up and it gave me, what did I see there, 7 dB? Anybody on 15 today, it's gonna be freakish. So I get a two to one here. Usually it's like a 1.5 to one on 15 meters with this uh, 40 meter infrared half wave. Oh, and I should tell people, often when I'm running and I have more than like a 1.5 to one SWR, I get comments and questions from people saying, hey, doesn't that damage your radio? Absolutely not. Most modern radios will shut off if they have too much SWR, but I don't really start to worry until I'm three to one and higher even. And even then I don't even worry that much. Like most of my Elecraft radios can handle probably four to one, maybe even five to one. Um, don't worry too much about it. You still get a lot of RF energy out of your antenna. So don't worry about that one bit. <laughs> I messed up my call sign, so I thought I'd do it again. I would be really tempted just for the fun of it to pump the power up on this, but I think that my antenna, I don't think that little um, toroid on there can handle a whole lot of heat. I 
I basically only run more than five watts when I'm doing field day or if I'm trying to work a little extra DX. Like um, if I had this radio and I'm in a park and I've got an antenna that can handle the wattage, I'll sometimes turn it up just to give people a shot that may not be able to hear my QRP signal on normal days. Just hearing crickets here. It is one of those days. Um, let me see. Eric is. Um, let me just send Eric a picture so he knows I'm working right now. Um, because he is in the field and he doesn't know that I've even tried to call him. Let me uh, hop back on the POTA site. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna go down. Eric is on 40 meters now and there's a better chance I can get him. Knowing Eric, he will not respond with a park number. That's great, Eric. Yeah, Eric's away this weekend. He's getting ready to do a rally event, I think. And um, that's just brilliant. I mean, it was great to work him. It was great to work him. Now look at this. See, I was getting a two decibel uh, figure on my 15 meter um, portion from a DL station. So I was making, my signal was getting out. It's not a very great signal today, but, um, oh, let's see here. Then here is Eric setting up. This must be uh, for his rally. And can you see this on here? So he just sent me this picture of where he is. That's his car. Um, and um, so he's just set up off the side of the road for this rally because his rally's, I think, in a national forest. In fact, let's see where it is. Um, his rally is in um, Tar Hollow State Forest. That's exactly where it was, Tar Hollow. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna take a snapshot of that so I don't forget it. Let's see, that's US 5452. And that was on 40 meters, so there's nothing on 15. Should I try 10? 
I, I need to go here pretty soon, but let, let's just go, maybe we'll try 10. If I hear something on 10, then I'll do 10. Not hearing anything on 10. Let's try some more park to parks here. Ooh, let's see. I see a station, I think, from the Netherlands, but they're on 40 meters, so that's not gonna happen. Okay, California, 14058. Ooh. fading out. Again, okay, they're not hearing them very well. really effective on this radio. There's just a lot of band noise today. That's okay. Got him, okay. <laughs> Yay, that was good fun. Yosemite. That's not bad, not a bad hop. So it's US 0071. Great to get you in the logs there, buddy. Okay, let's see. Let's put that there. Let's see if there's somebody else. I'll write in here T U um, P. Whoops. Ah. Oh. Okay, this is this is one annoying thing about this is it'll sometimes refresh on you. P two P T U. Nope. T U. I'm hearing some people over here. I'll make sure that nobody's in the way. Okay, Alaska on 17 meters. That is 74. I'm hearing a noise here. I haven't tuned this yet. Okay, 
Oh, I'm hearing a little something. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here to menu. We're going to change the ATU to on, hop out of menu, and then we're going to tune. Oh. There we go. And where are we? 74. This is going to be faint and I'm running it. I moved it up to 10 watts. This is Alaska. This is a very, very hard catch and on a day with bad bank conditions. They're so faint. Now what I'll often do is just wait around for the signal to come up a little bit. I'm not hearing it come up. Okay, so what we're going to do is turn the No, they can't hear me. Okay, we'll just move on here and see if I can work a few more park to parks. Uh, since I got a little bit of time. Okay, so just turn off the ATU again and we'll move down. I saw somebody, saw somebody on 40 meters. Okay, the Netherlands station's still there. Okay, WA3, Pennsylvania. We can try that. On some. to finally work you. Sorry I messed that up there, buddy.
You know what? I realize I got my, I, I have this completely messed up from about here on 18, 18, 18. I was looking at my watch and it's 14. So we're at 1841 and WA3GM was at US 1350, US 1351. Uh, and I work WA3GM a lot uh, when he hunts me. So it was kind of great to work him park to park. Park to park, T U. I like. Ugh, I keep writing R U in there. <laughs> I know it must be frustrating when you're here with me. You're like, Thomas, can't you type? <laughs> Maybe I'm not the only one with five fingers on a on a uh, little keyboard like this. Okay, let's try again on twenty and see if I can get forty two in Ontario. Normally that would be doable. I don't know about today though. I can try North Dakota again and see if it's come up any. Should wait a little bit longer than I just did just then, but I'm gonna go back and kind of float between these two. Nothing, nothing. I've parked a park about everybody I can here. That's not, that's still on, I think. If I had a microphone, I'd try to do some 1430 they've moved to. Nice. Okay, got North Dakota there. Got a lot of nice park to parks here, picking people off. There's somebody in North Carolina on 40. I'm gonna try that just came on. That's a little close for 40 during the day. Let's see. <laughs> Eric said it was really muddy where he was um, when he was activating WD8 RIF. I mean, he is at a rally spot, so. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything there. It's awfully close for, um, so I'll put uh, P to P. Um, good, okay, I think I'm gonna call it quits now. Let me just take a couple more photos here. I need to head back to the house. My wife's got some projects for me. My honey-do list. Oh, this is such a photogenic radio. <laughs> I really do think so. I think this is a photogenic radio, if there's ever been one. And just its simplicity. You know, the RG01 has like a simple layout. And this was designed, this was designed by a, um, so I'm hearing the other end of this. I can't hear the activator. But this was designed by a guy who does DXing and who's an avid CW operator. So like right out of the bat, um, right out of the gate, I should say, and right off the bat, um, 
the, you know, even when I was beta testing this radio, the keyer was excellent. Um, all those things worked really well. In fact, the only things we really came across in beta testing were just like little teeny glitchy bug things in the menu system and stuff, and Boris sorted all those out. Um, this radio, I will tell you this. Again, I'll, I'll speak more to this in the getting to know you that I'm going to do for this radio. But... Um, and the getting to know you videos, if you haven't done, if you haven't seen one of mine before, I just spend uh, time before my activation talking about what I love about the radio and all that stuff, and and you know some of the unique things about it. And the RGO one is one of those radios, first of all, that I'm just in love with so much. I would sell my K2 before I sell my RGO one. That's how much I love this radio. It, I'll never. This is in my permanent collection. <laughs> It'll never go anywhere. Uh, so. Um, you know, I think it's a very special radio. If you get a chance, if you like this sort of thing, if you like a legacy kind of radio with a super head and, and that, those kind of audio characteristics, a little, uh, excuse me, a low noise floor and all of that, then you would be very pleased, I think, with the Argo One. It's just such a great radio. Um, if you are the kind of person that likes the latest technology and you want like um, a heat display, you know, like, uh, Spectrum displays and stuff like that, of course, this is not for you. But the great thing about this radio is you can turn it on, it's just on. There's no boot up time, it's just pretty much on. And um, uh, there are modules you can get for it, like noise blankers, SSB. In a way, it's kind of like a, an Elecraft radio in that respect, that you have these modules you can add to it. Boris is always innovating. There's another module coming out before long. I can't even remember what it is now, but he's always working on it. And the community of people that have these radios is pretty darn strong. Uh, they've got a good uh, discussion group, and Boris addresses things really quickly uh, when they happen. It's just an exceptional radio. I don't mean to, like, like I said, in the spirit of full disclosure, I was a beta tester for this radio. I've had this now five years i think this particular model because we replaced out my beta unit um probably five years ago uh, but i remember meeting boris at the uh probably 2018 hamvention and he just had a place out in the flea market and he had a you know a model of this radio and where he was talking about it and he had some product brochures and stuff and i was immediately enamored with the radio especially after speaking with him and um yeah, I love this. Love this radio. Anyway, <laughs> I better stop gushing about the radio. Um, I'm not trying to tempt anyone, but I'm just saying, if you're interested in one of these, you probably won't find them on the used market very often. Like I said, maybe once or twice a year, you'll see one on the used market. Um, you just probably need to get a new one and contact Boris on his website, find out when he's doing his next production run, and you can maybe get in on that production run to get yourself one too. Uh, so let's see how many I, I contacted. They one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I don't think that's too bad at all. Uh, a lot of park to parks. Um, we got to help each other out on days like today. That's for sure. Oops. One thing I need to do before I put this up, especially since I'm not, I do this anyway, but especially since I am not um, logging live on hammers or an app like that, I need to take a picture of my logs here. Yes, sir. Whoops, that's right, this side. Get a nice picture of my logs. I've got that. And um, let's uh, go ahead and put this antenna up, shall we? I need to, uh, I've got more things to do. I got my pockets full of stuff today. I've still got tools and things in my pocket I took along uh, for the uh, uh, radio museum. Get a little bit of water. Let's put up my logs here. Let's turn off the radio. Okay, so I've got to keep this radio in the car so I can do my next uh, POTA activation with it or one of my next ones. I'm actually getting today, and this will probably be out already, but I'm getting another a production run, uh, Shegu X6200. Uh, so I'll be testing that radio as well, and it may be the next one I take out to the field just because I need to give it a little test, make sure everything's working okay on it. Yeah, is that pollen already? Um, oh, also, I don't know that I have to use my 15 amp bio -Anno, uh battery with this, but I brought this along. I usually pair it with this one. Um, I do run more, so I'm, I, I'm a QRP guy, but you'll find me on rare occasions work more than QRP, and that's usually if I've got something special going on, like say a um, 
special event station I'm helping with or field day or something. And also on those occasions when I just decide that I want to um, try a little QRO, like maybe up to 20 or so watts, um, you know, you may find me occasionally doing that, not very often. Okay, so let's see. I'll go ahead and I'm just going to walk out here and uh, we'll put up the antenna now. And hopefully you can see some of this. What I'll do is unhook the weight from the opposite end. Yeah, that you can't see it up here, but the end of the antenna is almost at the top of the tree. That's how perfectly this is spaced for a 40 meter in fed half wave in this old tree that I've been throwing lines in for four years now or so, I think. But it is not long for this world. I'm just waiting any day to come out here and it's just not here because it's fallen. Whoops, let's throw that back over there. What we'll do is wind up the antenna first. By the way, I stick both of these microphones on my lapel here so that uh, you're not just hearing me in one ear. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. And I don't like changing the audio in post. If you know me, I don't like doing anything in post. Most people do everything in post. I don't, I'm like allergic to it. I don't like to do anything in post-production. Okay, let's get this guy up here. Super easy to do. I love this little antenna. Again, this is made by Jonathan KM4CFT. There's no magic to it other than it's a cool little design. It's not as small as K6ARKs, but it's pretty darn small and it's just an infed half wave. It's a little easier to build because um, just slightly larger. Though K6ARK also has a um, uh, version of his kit that's a little bit larger, like a, by a little bit. It also has a larger toroid to work with. Okay. It takes a while to wind when you're on a small winder like this, but, and this is a K6ARK winder, which means it spools out very quickly. I do find sometimes though that as I'm winding it, it'll roll off the winder because this is super slick wire as it is very silky stuff and this is stuff that I got from <laughs> my buddy Alan W2AEW. Boy I hope the audio is coming through because it's gonna look like I'm talking to myself otherwise. <laughs> Someone said that. Thomas don't worry when your mics don't work it just looks like you're talking to yourself. I actually do talk to myself a lot. It's how I remember things. It's by talking to myself. Okay, come on. Let's get you all on here. Antenna, we should be getting close to the end. We are. It just takes a while because this is a small winder. Man, I'm glad I wasn't out in the sun today. It's warm in the sun. Feels so much nicer under that. Um picnic shelter. I've got a really pretty drive home. When I drive home here, I go up on the parkway and uh, it's just a really lovely drive. I used to do this drive a whole lot. My daughters don't take classes out this way anymore though. So I'm not out here as often as I used to be. There we go. There's the end of that. I'll go ahead and put this Velcro around the antenna just to hold everything in place nicely. I do love this thing. There we go. And we'll roll up this. I probably told you before that I don't often bother doing the over under method with this particular cable because it's, um, it's kind of stiff. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's just kind of a stiff uh, um, jacket around it, which I love, by the way. Um, I think it actually makes for a really good heavier cable. I don't take this on soda activations or anything like that, but for POTA it's wonderful. It shows up really nicely in a park. Oh, and ABR is going to send me, the, you know, they're an affiliate um, of 
qrpr.com. So if you buy their if you buy your stuff through them, and I, I wholeheartedly recommend <laughs> ABR. I've been recommending them way before I was ever affiliate or anything like that. They approached me about doing it because I sent them so much business, and the reason why is because I love their stuff. I think they're like the best made cables in the United States, and the company's amazing. Uh, it's sort of a ham radio owned thing. It's a woman owned business. Um, they make these in Texas and they're just a wonderful company and they're coming out with an RG316 one with a jacket on it. In fact, they had it at Hamvention, but I didn't want to take any of the ones that they had on display so people could buy them there. They're going to send me one to uh, check out and I'm really looking forward to it because I love this stuff. And it has some built-in ferrites, but if you buy through me on my link, you can save a little bit. I think when you, um, there's, a, there's a coupon code uh, for saving money and we get a little bit of... Uh, commission on it. I'm just going to take you over here. Let me do it. You can see over here a little bit. How, I don't know if you can see that or not. Just how I'm just on the tip of that tree over there. <laughs> if this tree were alive, I wouldn't worry about it at all, but you can see stuff's been falling off the tree. So for that reason, and this is something you should always be aware of when you're doing poda or soda. You don't want to put yourself underneath something dead, right? So that's a really bad idea if you do, because those things can be what they call widow makers. And you don't want to be a widow maker. <laughs> you don't want to be under a widow maker. This line's so light, I don't think it's going to tug or do anything to that branch. I'm sure it'll survive this, but... You stay away from it. And in fact, if I'm being honest, with dead trees, I always look at the tree and see where I think if it were to fall, it would fall. Like if the wind or something came through, you gotta be watching out for that. Um, and so I see on the side of the tree that it looks like it wouldn't fall because they all naturally kind of like bend one way or another and that's usually where they're going to fall and uh, go on the other side. I was just reading this morning in our local paper that a local high school girl, four days from her graduation, um, was camping with friends and they were camping in a spot that had some straight line winds and a tree fell on her camper, which was really sad. I don't know if she's in a tent or a camper and killed her. It was just so sad. Uh, trees are amazing. I love them, but I'm, I'm also very careful of trees when I'm out and about. And honestly, if you're at a park like this where they don't mind you putting lines in trees, if you ask, um, if you're in a park like this, you've got to pay attention to it because you're, if you're throwing a line in a tree, you're going to be putting a little stress on the branch. It may be stress that it can easily handle, but it's still stress. And if it's going to fall, it's going to fall while you're, let's see if I can get this to stay up. <laughs> um, it's going to fall while you're messing with it, right? So be aware of that. Here we go. Stuff this back in the bag. It's ready for my next deployment. I've been using this one a lot. I used to use my Marlow two millimeter line, and I realized lately it seems like when I'm throwing lines in trees, I'm putting them in um, sometimes trees like this with a lot of uh, branches that's kind of dense, and you don't want to necessarily use a lightweight, you want to use like this thicker poly rope and a heavier weight when you're throwing it in a tree like that. And I packed that today because I didn't know if I was going to use this tree over here. A tree like this one doesn't really matter. But just keep a rule of thumb, the higher you're going, the more you want the weight to weigh. I never go over 12 ounce weights, but if you use an 8 ounce weight on that tree, that's, that's, that was up pretty high. Probably wouldn't happen with this tree, but if you're using an 8 ounce weight and you go up very high, it's like the weight of the line itself stops the weight from coming down because the weight can't overcome just the static sort of weight of the line uh, when you go up really high. So the higher you go, most of the time you want more um, weight on top. But I don't ever use 16 ounces or anything like that. 16 ounce weights. Okay, let's get this guy packed up. Ooh, I've got a key in here I forgot about. And I actually packed up a lot of this stuff in this husky box here. 
Oh, a friend of mine was just asking me what size this box is. I think it's the five gallon size. Let me look and see if I can find it while I'm here. By this Husky box, I'm talking about this. These are sold at Home Depot. I just found them one time and there are some nicer boxes out there, higher end boxes, but these are good because what I like about these, uh, I keep them just for, well, it says camping gear on my wife labels everything. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the, maybe the five gallon size, but you can open the lid like this and it comes off. The lid has a little gasket around it. So it is pretty darn um, uh, waterproof and watertight, which is really good. This just carries like extra stuff in here. And I had this for hamvention. I haven't completely cleared it out yet. You know what? I'm not seeing on here what it says it is, but I'm pretty sure this is just a five gallon one. I think it's five gallons. Let's put my key in here. Put the battery. I may put the battery on top. Should I put the battery on top? I'll put it right there like that. Cable in here. And I think that's it. Oh, I can get my little folding seat. And this will all hold it in here nice and tight. But the other really cool thing about this lid is if you pop it on and you do two sides of it, you can lift it like a lid. So I can change it and I can, I can lift it from this side or this side. And both sides actually have a place to put a key in, or a lock in it. Not that I would ever do that. But it's, it's kind of nice and convenient. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming along with me today. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It's, it's always nice to come out and do these activations. And I've got to say, I probably told you this already, but um, I was telling my wife yesterday just how insanely rewarding it was going to Hamvention and so many people coming up to me and saying that, um, you know, they enjoyed my videos and the thing I heard more than anything else was people said, don't change your format. And I have no intention of changing my format <laughs> for a lot of reasons, but this is how I like to do things. It's not what YouTube likes. Um, so I'll never have, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. That's not going to happen. And I'm fine with that. Um, I'm uh, actually, I'm more than fine with that because as I've said before, I kind of feel like with the smaller channel, you have a smaller community that wants to be here. They're not just drive-by commenters. I don't get a lot of those. I don't have to deal with a lot of spam and uh, trolls and things. I don't, I rarely have anything like that. And uh, so I kind of like the channel being the way it is right now. And I don't care what my statistics are or anything. I don't even look at them. I can't tell you right now how many subscribers I have even. Um, so I appreciate you being there. And it was just really heartwarming when people said that they felt like they were coming along for a ride because I honestly feel that way. And when I meet you in person, I feel the same way. I feel like you've been there with me on these activations. Um, I'd like to think that when you're out and about uh, doing activations too, that you kind of feel like somebody's there along with you as well because uh, I think we kind of all are in this community. We all experience the same thing when we go out, kind of the thrill of doing radio outdoors, making contacts, connecting with our community and friends, and just having fun. Uh, it's not something that everybody in the world does. A lot of people have smartphones, very few people have an HF radio <laughs> or an HT for that matter. So I love it. Anyway, thank you so much for coming with me today. Take care of one another out there. Be kind to one another. And until next time, seven twos.